Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozort, and in this video, I want to talk about metal plasticity in Abacus Part 2 Johnson Cook Plasticity Model. This is the table of content. I will talk about fundamental assumption of Johnson Cook Plasticity Model, kinds of Johnson Cook Plasticity Model. Detailed mathematical description of Johnson Cook plasticity model, and finally, an example of using Johnson Cook plasticity model. The Johnson Cook plasticity model is a particular type of Mises plasticity model with analytical forms of the hardening law and rate dependence. It's suitable for high strain rate deformation of many materials including most metals. It's typically used in adiabatic transient dynamic simulations. Can be used in conjunction with the Johnson Cook dynamic failure model in Abacus Explicit. Can be used in conjunction with the tensile failure model to model tensile spall or pressure cutoff in Abacus Explicit. Can be used in conjunction with the progressive damage and failure models to specify different damage initiation criteria and damage evolution laws that allow for the progressive degradation of the material stiffness and the removal of elements from the mesh. Must be used in conjunction with either the linear elastic material model or the equation of a state material model uses a Mises yield surface with associated flow. Here I want to talk about fundamental assumption of Johnson Cook plastic model. In the Johnson Cook plasticity model, it is assumed that the yield stress is a function of plastic strain, strain rate and temperature. In the most general case, the yield stress is a function of plastic strain, plastic strain rate and temperature. And we can assume that the yield surface is equal to the multiplication of several functions f1, f2, and f3. These three functions will be explained in the next slides. Now I want to talk about kinds of Johnson Cook plasticity model. If we assume that the yield stress is only dependent on the plastic strain, we have this form of Johnson Cook plasticity model. If we assume that the yield stress is dependent on the plastic strain and temperature, we have this form of Johnson Cook plasticity model. If we assume that the yield stress is dependent on the plastic strain and strain rate, we have this form of Johnson Cook plasticity model. And finally, if we assume that the yield stress is dependent on the plastic strain and strain rate and temperature, we have this form of Johnson Cook plasticity model. This form is the most general form of Johnson Cook plasticity model. Now I want to talk about detailed mathematical description of Johnson Cook plasticity model. This is the detailed mathematical description of F1 function where this variable is the equivalent plastic strain and A, B, and N are material parameters measured at or below the transient temperature. The transient temperature is defined as the one at or below which there is no temperature dependence of the yield stress. The material parameters must be measured at or below the transition temperature. And this is the detailed mathematical description of F2 function, where this variable is the equivalent plastic strain rate. And C and epsilon dot sub zero are material parameters measured at or below the transition temperature. This is the detailed mathematical description of F3 function. And this is the description of theta hat, where theta is the current temperature, theta submelt 
is the melting temperature and theta sub transition is the transition temperature. Usually the transition temperature is set to the room temperature like 20 or 25 centigrade. When theta is greater than theta sub melt, the material will be melted and will behave like a fluid. There will be no shear resistance since the hardening memory will be removed by setting the equivalent plastic strain to zero. If back stresses are specified for the model, these will also be set to zero. In the next slides, an example of using Johnson Cook plasticity model is explained in detail. The mentioned example is according to a reference paper. Here, I want to talk about this research paper. Impact of plasticity generated by Rayleigh waves on the residual stress behavior of a structure component subjected to laser pinning. Laser shot pinning process is simulated according to this paper. In this paper, the residual stress field created in several kinds of geometry including convex, concave, and flat geometries is investigated. In this tutorial, the investigation on the flat geometry is explained in detail. This is a schematic picture of the laser shot pinning process. This is the laser source and after the impact of laser pulse to the workpiece, shock waves are created. Loading due to the laser shot is modeled by defining pressure on the laser spot domain. In the first part of the simulation, the shock waves must be simulated by using the dynamic explicit step. And infinite elements are used around the geometry for modeling of silent boundaries. So the boundaries of the model will be non-reflecting. This is one-fourth of the flat geometry. As there are two symmetric planes in the problem, only one-fourth of the geometry is modeled. Boundary conditions are applied to the symmetric faces of the model geometry. According to the picture, finite elements are surrounded by the infinite elements. These are finite elements and the red elements are infinite elements. Symmetry boundary conditions are applied to these two faces and the pressure is applied on the blue surface. Now I want to talk about system of units. The unit of length is millimeter, the unit of mass is tone, the unit of force is newton, the unit of time is second, the unit of stress is megapascal, and the unit of energy is millijoule. Laser shot pinning is a high strain rate process. The material response of the component to high strain rates can be significantly different from static and quasi-static loading conditions. Hence, an accurate constitutive model has to be chosen to simulate the material behavior. The Johnson Cook model is a good choice for this purpose. Since the thermal effect is minimal for laser shot pinning process, the temperature term can be removed from the model. If the isotropic plasticity model without rate dependency is used, the simulation is not accurate. For the simulation of laser shot pinning process, this form of Johnson Cook plasticity model will be used. As you can see, this form of Johnson Cook plasticity model will be used for this simulation. And there is no temperature dependency in the equation. And these are the constants of the equation. A, B, N, C, and epsilon dot sub zero. And this is Young's modulus, and this is Poisson's ratio, and this is density. Here I have used the values in the mentioned table for defining the Johnson Cook plasticity model. Plastic behavior is chosen, the hardening is set to Johnson Cook and the constants are defined. A, B, and N, C, and epsilon dot zero. 
As there is no need for definition of temperature dependent plastic behavior, all of the variables that are related to temperature dependency are set to zero. Now I want to show you the related abacus model. Density is defined, elastic behavior is defined, and plastic behavior is defined. Rate dependency is set to Johnson Cook. Dynamic explicit step is used. No mass scaling is defined because the simulation is not static or quasi-static and it is completely dynamic. No interactions are defined. Because of the impact of laser, pressure is defined here. And symmetry boundary conditions are defined. And this is the mesh of the model. In the next tutorial, the combined hardening plasticity model and its applications will be explained in detail. The package including Abacus models, IMP files and the result files of the 3D laser shot pinning simulation for the flat geometry are ready for purchase. The price of the package and the details of the payment is provided in the description part of the video. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to me. We have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp and we can make a special tutorials to your order. We can perform high quality simulations for your thesis exercises and industrial projects. Now I want to suggest you two other related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.